Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. Well, I've spent the vast majority of my professional career working in the identity space and working with user personality profiling and, and, and personalization and building a mechanism for, for really building out personal experiences for users. What we've seen in trends over time is that these types of experiences drive user traffic through the roof. You've seen it in, in social adver uh, targeted advertising. You've seen it in brick and mortar stores like Target and Walmart targeting uh, credit card purchasing of users to target things like a uh, pregnancy state of, uh, of uh, a, a potential buyer and being able to target coupons based on that. We've seen this type of personalization effect all over the commerce realm. And within the mobile environment, it's vastly important, even more so than anything that you would see on the web, because you can see a massive drop off of users as you put new screens in front of them. And the entire aspect of identity and personalization is all about reducing these complexities and building upon a personalization state for your end users. Now, this is my daughter, Scarlett. She's almost two years old. At around one year old, when she was just learning to walk, the first thing that she walked towards to was an iPad. She picked that thing up, and within a couple of minutes, she learned how to unlock it. She learned how to open up an application. She almost learned how to buy a $3,000 Fendi purse. Thankfully, that stopped. But we've had interesting, uh, interesting purchases from Groupon coming through that we've had to lock those applications. And wh what has this told me? Just by watching my daughter exploring the world when she's only a couple of years old, cannot talk, cannot form sentences, yet she can use these intuitive applications. She can use these commerce-based systems to find what she's looking for, load up a whole bunch of Disney products that she's looking for that we had no idea. Now, this is exactly what you want to get with, with all of these product architectures. This is what personalization gets you. This is what simplicity gets you. Targeting human beings at a core virtual level. You're not targeting children, you're targeting human beings. We all share the same aspect of wanting just an intuitive system, an easy concept. And as we're inundated with data over and over and over again throughout our lives, the simplicity and bringing everything back to a core user level is exactly where we need to be. So going to these concepts, really what you're looking at is you want to offload complexity. You want to build in simplicity. And upon simplicity, you need to build that with personalization, with building upon identity concepts. Because this is going to give you the complete personal state that people are looking for. Users are no longer content with seeing static data that every single person sees. What they want is a completely personalized state to what they're viewing. They want something that's, that's comfortable for them. They want to build upon those aspects. And mobile environments are perfect for that. Building upon these mobile infrastructures because you have touch sensors, because you can target things like agitation states and boredom states, which I'll get into. Uh, before PayPal, I had worked at Yahoo, um, and before Yahoo at CBS. And a lot of what I had worked on were authentication and authorization systems. Many of you might be familiar with them. It's the concepts behind and the technology behind social login buttons, like login with Facebook, Twitter, uh, login with Yahoo. These were amazing concepts because myself as a developer evangelism, I have to spend a lot of time curating my own profiles. I have to spend a lot of time managing my online relevance. And at the same time, many of us share those same aspects. Many of us are having to do that day in and day out, trying to find a separation between your personal state and your professional state. And the first time I saw this, I thought it was the coolest thing, being able to log in with my Facebook account, being able to log in with my Yahoo account, that was cool because I could, I could have a centralized profile that I could share everywhere. I don't have to create a registration form every single time I'm, I'm using a product. But it wasn't before too long where I was building products on top of this identity data coming back that I realized there was a fundamental flaw. All this data coming back is completely user curated. Users have a chance to build their own profiles. That's the standard of the social web. 
That's what it brought. And it gave you a massive reach to users and a massive relevance in that space. But the biggest problem is that there was a whole bunch of fake data out there. Not only fake data like this, fake accounts, even from companies that push true identity. There was a, there's an old adage that says, you should never compare your real life to someone's highlight reel. On social profiles, what you're getting is people's highlight reel. They're, they are portraying themselves how they, want to, how they want others to presume they live their lives. But the problem with building off this identity infrastructure is you're only getting a tiny piece of their personality. You're only getting a tiny piece of the identity that you can use. So the biggest problem is that you're having to bypass this information. So building up a complete personality profile beyond user curation. Now, that led me to the realization that identity is really not Facebook. It's not Twitter. It's not even PayPal. It's not building upon these uh, social infrastructures or these infrastructures of, of uh, identity be based on verified account status. What these identity concepts are, simply put, is a tool. And I've had too many companies that have come to me and said, oh, we've implemented this login st structure because, oh, everyone uses it. But the biggest problem is that six months down the road, when you want to use this identity infrastructure as the basis for your commerce-based applications, when you want to personalize your mobile state to make it easier for users to get to point A to point B, product to sale, you can't use that data. That data is not personally relevant. That data cannot be trusted. So understanding the proper tool, the proper data infrastructure that you're building off of is so important. Working off the identity infrastructure or the social login structure or the concrete login structure and understanding the data that you're, uh, that you're building your architecture off of becomes uh, so relevant in your application development experience. Now this led me to two completely separa separate ideas of identity. There's the user curated side. Again, this is where you're building upon existing social infrastructures and ideas that, that users curate this, uh, this idea of themselves. This has amazing reach and the, all the social login structures that you see usually have massive reach, much more than the other idea of identity, which is what PayPal builds off of, concrete identity structure. Utilizing verified account-based data, this is what we base our identity off of. We verify the address information, we verify uh, a, a, you know, the gender, we ge verify the locale. You know, all of this information becomes uh, incredibly valuable for the uh, merchant experience because you're building a, an infrastructure of identity that is your base. But identity goes be way, way, way beyond simply the identity, but simply beyond the login. The identity structure overall, just utilizing data, should remove complexities from the existing experience of the user. When they're going to your application, going to your site, whether it's responsive, whether it's native, it doesn't matter. Removing complexities like a login structure, having the users having to remember passwords and usernames and passwords on every single application out there, when they use login structures like this on a day-to-day -day basis, if you can get the identity from a social login structure, from a concrete login structure, it should be utilized. Because that's going to give you the basis for your identity. Beyond the login, removing things like this, when you're pushing people through a purchasing flow, this is a gigantic barrier to entry. And the, the largest drop-off rate that you're going to see from your users co is coming from these registration forms. A registration, you see a massive drop off in, in user rate. But why put this in front of them when you have an identity infrastructure that can support this, that can pre fill this information, where users can verify that detail of themselves instead of having to enter it all themselves on a mobile device as they're going on a bus bouncing around? Why have them pre fill something that they filled out a hundred times in the past? Now, this is, as I mentioned, the, how we build out login with PayPal. Another login structure built off the concepts of concrete identity. I've been working in both social identity realms as well as this concrete identity realm, and it's all about picking the right tool set. 
this targets that address, uh, the specific address information, is how, and it's how we're building identity structures. But again, it comes down to picking the right tool set. Now, where identity gets really cool, and this is where, where PayPal has been exploring for, you know, for a couple of years now. When we are building upon the, uh, the structures of logging with PayPal, utilizing verified account details that the user has entered in, ver we verified on the PayPal side, you can do a lot of interesting things. But before I jump into those, the one thing I need to mention is identity mining and personalization is an incredibly intellectual pursuit. And it's always treated that way. It's always treated as, hey, I have this mass amount of data about this person. I wonder if I can figure out this. The answer is usually yes. But the problem is we're doing, dealing with human beings here. We're not dealing with things. We have to have a human aspect in this, and we have to be conscious that these are human beings with personal information that might, they might not want to share. So there has to be a human component in all identity personalization that you're building out. And unfortunately, we're in a wild west of identity information. And unfortunately, some of this information is getting uh, overused, which is why PayPal is being so careful about the information that we're looking into and the, the aspects of what we can do. But going back to this, where identity gets really interesting is building off the identity foundation, off that, those core details, let's say address information and dealing with, with things like uh, gender or locale. You can actually build out some cool things on identity. Time interaction is one of them. So we're talking about two things here, calendar time and interaction time. When I first built my, uh, my probably my first identity data mining engine, based on web-based content and what people are looking at, I had a, was able to build out personality profiles for a user automatically without them curating any other data. Basically building out a personality profile based on what they're, what they're exploring, what they're doing, which is how personality profiles should be built. The unfortunate part is my results got skewed at certain times of the year. Let me give you an example. I might have a, a person that's interested in sports, interested in, in cars and fishing. And then all of a sudden, Valentine's Day comes around. And their interests skew towards lingerie and, uh, and chocolate. Now, obviously, you don't want this becoming a, a core part of their, their profile. So what you have to do in personali personalization is tie time interactions e over long term to build out a profile. So we naturally, as human beings, will evolve over time. Our interests will evolve. And our personality profile should do the same thing. So mining data on a time-by-time -time basis and having it as relevant doesn't make sense. Beyond calendar time, you have to be aware of relevance on a uh, time on site. So based on, uh, this is what, what gets really interesting on mobile devices, is that based on touch sensors and, and monitoring what the user is doing and how they're interacting with content, what you can do is monitor things like agitation state and boredom. Now beyond agitation state, boredom is a really interesting one in the commerce realm. Let's say you have some, uh, you just take a look at your, your spouses, your family, and you'll see them when they're, when they're uh, just browsing a site, let's say Etsy, and they're going through and just shopping on there. They'll add a couple of things to the cart, but they'll keep going page after page after page, and you'll see this scrolling type effect, slowly scrolling through. You might see them put it down as they get bored as they're going along and come back to it later. So you'll, you'll be able to monitor things like like interaction time dropping off. You'll be able to monitor things like uh, swipe slowdowns. And what that tells you is that the user might be either bored with your content or they're waiting for you to take some initiative to interact with the content. If they've added things to their card already, this is a prime interaction component. And what this means is that you can push them directly to the cart to check out. Purchasing items as opposed to just dropping off and never purchasing them in, in the first place increasing your overall conversion rate. Beyond this, beyond the single human beings, there's also the concept of commonality overlap. Think of it like Netflix recommendations, where you have, let's say, a personality profile that overlaps someone else in a certain degree. Let's say I have an interest profile based on the personality profile that I've built for a person. Let's say I have an overlap of 80%. There are 20% outlying, cap uh, outlying aspects, outlying interests that aren't shared. Those are the prime pieces of content to build into a recommendation engine. 
those are the prime pieces of content because I have a likeness of shared interest that I am more likely going to be interested in. So instead of having just a single personality profile, you can expand way beyond towards comparing users together. These are some of the interesting future steps that identity is going to be taking as they personalize the web. And as you build in recommendation engines, what you're seeing now in a lot of these, uh, these recommendation systems is person A purchased this, but other people who have purchased this also purchased these. And that's product knowledge. That's understanding your products. People have been doing this for years. But it doesn't go into the personalization effect. As you have a personality profile for a user and what their interest levels are, let's say they're interested in automotive, your recommendations so should skew towards automotive. They should take into account what other people have purchased because that shows the, uh, the likeness or the amount of people that have liked certain products. They're more likely going to be interested in that. But it should skew towards personality. It should always skew towards the user's state. And optimists have said that they have seen a 30% increase in traffic, basically conversion rates. Uh, on this. I've seen as low in, in studies, as low as 10%. I've seen optimists that have said 40, but I've never seen conversion at that level or increase in traffic at that level. Might have been in the short term around Christmas time, but long term traffic, you're looking at a definite increase based on recommendation systems. Now, going beyond that, it go, all comes down to simplicity. Reducing the complexity of a user going from point A to point B. You throw a screen in front of someone, that's a potential point of failure. That's a potential point for them to just leave your site, your application. So what you can do with the personalization effect is pre-fill information. That's your goal towards personalizing the web. Building on, building on top of an identity infrastructure as your core value behind your application. You want to get to the point where the user doesn't have to really think about doing anything. It's just there for them. It's personalized for them. And the reasons why you want to do things like that are because of stats like these. 23% of customers abandoning carts when they're asked to register or when they're asked to sign in. They don't, they don't want to pre-fill this information because they've done it before. As you throw more questions in front of them, as you throw more screens in front of them, definite drop off. There's been many studies around uh, funnel techniques on uh, the point where a person sees a product, the point where they're purchasing and every screen you pop in front of them. Registration form has, uh, has a definite drop off rate on that. So using identity for both personalization and simplicity. And how do you fix these mobile drop off rates? Well, this actually goes back to the story that I started with of my daughter. Simplicity. Building out things that are intuitive for users to, to integrate with, that they can just have single click flows as you push through. Reducing the complexity and building upon the personalization engine to give them customized experience. So you're giving them simplicity, you're giving them comfort. Those are the aspects of identity that are so vastly important and things that I've been exploring throughout the years. And then beyond that, building in further simplicity, this is one of the technologies that we have, uh, Card.io. Card.io is an interesting aspect in the future of commerce that we've seen a lot of our partners integrate. Essentially allows you to scan, scan a credit card, a gift card, things like that, and utilize it as a funding source because it pulls out the information directly. There are a lot of really great aspects for this because what you're doing here is removing the, cap removing the user from having to enter in all that information themselves to the point where they can just take a picture and have it immediately parse it out securely. This is what I mean about removing the complexity level. So those are all the aspects that I really wanted to talk to you about, about these identity concepts, personalization of, of mobile content. And the mobile web is, is just ripe for, for building in these concepts. It's where everything is moving towards, but it's not there yet. You have companies doing such divergent things and where they can finally understand all this big data that they've been collecting for years on people. They're finally able to understand how that relates back to human interaction. And there's been a lot of what I've, I've done over the years. So thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate you joining me.